What's going on everyone? Going to the history coming to you here from Chinatown in Washington DC, Florida. Florida, not Florida. Washington DC, the District of Columbia, the federal city. It is believed that in the boarding house right in front of me that there was multiple meetings when the conspirators conspired for the assassination of the 16th president of the United States. It is now a Chinese restaurant and it's known for having a illustrious past and it's also known for having a haunted past. So it's believed that maybe the uh, former innkeeper, Mary Surratt, maybe still haunts this building. I'll show you some, uh, some clips of it here in a second and give you a little bit more of the story. Subscribe to the channel for more. Come along with me, let's go. Washington, D.C. is home to many old and historic sites. All of them have seen their fair share of drama and intrigue over time. Perhaps none more than the Surratt House. Mary Surratt was an austere-looking woman, tall with shiny hair and an abrupt part. The hair became much less neat as she strangled by her own body weight, pulling it tight against a hangman's noose, as she earned the notorious title of being the first American woman to be executed by the federal government in the United States. This notorious townhouse was owned by her and her husband, and the deeds and conspiracies she orchestrated there earned her the right to be associated with this place for all time. Located on 604 8th Street Northwest, the awkward three and one half stories tall building can generously be described as being in the Greek Revival style. The building was redesigned in 1925 so that the first floor could be used as a commercial space, which continues to this day. She and her entrepreneur husband, John Surratt, were Confederate sympathizers and ran an inn and tavern in Maryland. They often welcomed Confederate supporters into their establishments, talking conspiratorially into the small hours of the mornings. John Surratt bought the modest house from, an, from Augustus A. Gibson on December 6, 1853. He turned the house into a boarding house after the death of her husband in 1862. Mary Surratt had to manage the estate and his unpaid debts and angry creditors. Tired of managing it on her own and facing financial ruin, she sold much of the estate, settled her debts, and moved to the guest house in Washington, D.C. She chose to rent out the inn in Maryland to John Lloyd, a for former Washington, D.C. policeman and another Confederate sympathizer. Mary Surratt moved into the Washington, D.C. boarding house and ran it as a business. Mary Surratt's son, John Surratt Jr., also lived there sh shortly after after a short and unsuccessful career as a postmaster, another Confederate sympathizer, and failed seller of vegetables. He and his mother were suspected of harboring Confederate spies. Suspiciously, she only took in lodgers who were known personally to her or recommended to her by other people. One tenant introduced to Mary Surratt and her son was John Wilkes Booth. Booth would become a regular at the boarding house, both Booth quickly recruited John Surratt Jr. into his plot to kidnap and murder President Lincoln and the other two most important men in the country. Mary Surratt, too, was a key part of the kidnap plot that morphed into an assassination. Mary Surratt supplied binoculars, guns, and a mysterious package she later handed to Booth on the fateful night of the assassination of President Lincoln at Ford's Theater. The District of Columbia police arrived at Around 2 a.m. on the morning of April 15, 1865, they were searching for John Wilkes Booth and John Surratt. After the investigation in 1865, a military tribunal tried all the plotters of the assassination of Lincoln, heard several residents of the boarding house testify. A tribunal heard that Surratt had met regularly with John Wilkes Booth and several other conspirators at the Surratt House in Washington, D.C. Lloyd informed the tribunal Surratt had asked him to provide a pair of field glasses and several guns to both Booth and David Harold, his co-conspirator. This was the evidence that convicted Surratt, and she was sentenced to death. She became the first woman to be executed by the United States federal government. She was executed by hanging for her role as a member of the plot to assassinate President Abraham Lincoln. Each of the bodies hanged that day were allowed to swing for 30 full minutes, then cut down and inspected by a physician to ensure death had occurred. Her body now lays at Mount Olivet Cemetery under a simple gravestone. The night of her execution, an angry mob attacked the boarding house on 604 8th Street Northwest, ransacking it for souvenirs until the police stopped them. The building would be eventually listed on the U.S. National Registry of Historic Places on August 11, 2009. The house gained some attention when the release of a film in April of 2011 all about Mary Surratt. It was called The Conspirator. 
and is a good introduction to the story we tell here. The movie was directed by Robert Redford. As for the current use of the Surratt House, well, as of 2016, the shop on the first floor is now used as a Chinese restaurant with karaoke rooms available upstairs. Mary Surratt always insisted on her innocence, even while she was swinging from the gallows. In fact, many people believed her recently. Some historians have argued that she had to have known what was going on in her own house. Mary kept her home open to the booth and all of the co-conspirators who came to the house, according to her biographer, Kate Clifford Larson. Larson is quickly to point out that people came from all over to go to meetings at the house, and some of them even stayed overnight. It would be impossible to not know what was going on. By accounts, Mary Surratt was an intelligent woman, too. It seems impossible that she would have no idea of the plot that was cooking up in her boarding house. Mary Surratt was executed by hanging. Her neck was snapped on gallows, built especially for the occasion. The gallows were constructed in the courtyard of the Washington Arsenal Penitentiary, which is now Fort McNair. Uh, Mary Jenkins Surratt, a widow of, of 42 and the owner of the boarding house on 8th Street, was convicted and condemned as a co-conspirator in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. The military tribunal was anxious to get the conviction when Mary Surratt was pronounced guilty. The government's prosecutor hid the recommendations of life in prison from President Johnson, who quickly signed the death warrant. Mary Surratt's ghost gets around. You can find her spook at the fort she was jailed at, Fort McNair, the place she was hanged from, and her boarding house. From the 1870s onward, inhabitants of her boarding house have insisted that Surratt's spirit is accountable for the obscure whispers, incorporeal voices, murmurs, footfalls, stifled cries, and squeaking floorboards. Thousands of bizarre noises that have frightened tourists and visitors alike. The most haunted area in the boarding house is the second floor. To many, Mary was unjustly tried, and in many cases, she was, like most of the conspirators in Lincoln's plot, she would have gotten a stay of execution. Many believe that given the circumstances, the evidence, and the period, Mary deserved clemency. It is stated by friend scientists that a soul who dies violently with an unresolved issue is tossed into the state of unrest, and true the truth behind their death is revealed. Mary Surratt's ghost, investigator of the supernatural claim, remains increasingly stubborn and is still certain of its innocence. Her spirit is restless, searching for someone to vindicate her memory. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like, maybe leave a comment. As always, continue with history and film. Catch you guys in the next video.